Hey, welcome to another edition of Mississippi Stories. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, Editor-at-Large at Mississippi Today. And, you know, it's funny, sometimes when you pick out guests, you kind of go back in the memory bank and you think, well, who have I talked to in the past who's really cool and really fun to talk to and really interesting? Well, a few years ago for conversations for Mississippi Public Broadcasting, we did a show in Vicksburg and we had several former Miss Mississippis on, which I guess Miss Mississippis are kind of like Marines. There's no such thing as a former Miss Mississippi. <laughs> Once a Miss Mississippi, you're always one. But anyway, it was a really delightful conversation. And one of the, the guests was 1972's Miss Mississippi, Glenda Grubbs. And I guess you were Glenda Meadows at that time, technically. That's correct. Yeah, That's you were Glenda Meadows. I don't want to confuse anybody if they start Googling instantly as soon as they start talking about <laughs> this. But it just really was fun. And it was neat to hear a little bit about her life. And of course, she's got a really cool husband too that will, he's done a couple things along the way. And he's just a very creative guy in his own right. But it's just really fun. It was fun to hear about her career arc from living in Los Angeles, teaching music, using her vocal gift to switching over to becoming an artist and a painter. And she's a fabulous painter and one of my favorites, just because I love seeing her try new things and experiment and grow. So anyway, I think this is gonna be a good conversation and I think you're gonna enjoy it. And I wanna welcome Glenda Grubbs. Glenda, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here with you. And your ceiling, I was just noticing your ceiling is incredibly cool. How well, that's that? uh, left over from the teenage years of my daughter. Oh. <laughs> Sponge painted ceiling. I just haven't had it painted out yet. So. I understand. I, I think the, the house we just sold, we had um, a, a, a sports fan, you know, that had a big glove and a light and everything. And I'm sure <laughs> right. my 21-year-old would probably think, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I've outgrown that a wee bit, Dad. But Just um, a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. But anyway, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, so that was, I was trying to think, what was that, three, four years ago? I, you know, yeah, 2017. Was, I remember because uh, my sister in law and I left for uh, uh, Italy, I mean, for France right after that. Yeah. And uh, so I, I definitely remember that, 2017. Remember those days when we used to leave for France and do things uh, like that? <laughs> I'm just, I'm counting the years now until I can do that again. It was the most wonderful art trip. And we didn't even really, we planned it around lavender. Yeah. And uh, and we did see some lavender, although it was almost gone by the time we got there. Uh, but we did see lavender, but then we saw so much of where Van Gogh painted. And yeah. it, oh, we just, we loved it. It was a wonderful trip. Isn't it amazing, though, when you're seeing places that inspire the artists that inspire you? Yes, it is. Uh, it had we we came up on the um, uh, restaurant where he painted the 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 yellow walls and the yellow restaurant with the eaves outside, and we we sat and had lunch. Not there. We went down this so I could look at what he saw, and that was so much fun. Well, let's back up all the way back into the days when you were growing up in the metropolis of Richton. Big um, city. <laughs> yeah, for those, of you, for those of you who don't know where Richton is, it is, I guess, east of Hattiesburg and north of Beaumont. That's right, south of Laurel. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So it's the center of the universe. What was it like growing up back then? You know, it was wonderful for me. Uh, I had lots of opportunities because I could get to Hattiesburg or to Laurel in 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And I did take voice in Laurel and I did mm -hmm. take um, uh, baton twirling lessons and guitar in Hattiesburg. And uh, I, I was an only child and I uh, lived just outside of town. And I, did, I didn't have anybody close, close to me, you know, to play with on a regular basis. So I entertained myself and I played piano, taught myself ukulele. I twirled the baton and I later became a drum major of the band and I played clarinet and just everything artsy was, I did except drawing and painting. Really? Those were the, the I just, I took dance lessons in Hattiesburg. I did all of those things, but, um, all of my life, I remember looking at a beautiful flower or a beautiful mountain or a picture and so, oh, I wish I could paint that. And uh, 
I, and I said that throughout my life. And finally, you know, I was married and Gary said, you know, I think, I think it's time for you to start painting. Wow. And I said, I don't know if I can, I, I, I can't draw. I, I don't know what to do. And he's no, 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 you will do this. And he was my best, biggest encourager. And when we moved back to Mississippi, I finally had time. I was not teaching and I finally had time to, to try it. And I've never looked back because I've just, I love it. Well, were your parents, I mean, you were an only child, were your parents, um, did they understand the value of the arts and they really kind of pushed you or did they just kind of provide opportunities for you? How did that work? Well, they provided opportunities, but they saw that I had such an interest. I was singing at a very early age and uh, started singing in choir at church as soon as I could. They had children's youth choir and started singing solos uh, when I was about in fourth grade uh, on Sunday night <laughs> and uh, uh, had, you know, for a small town, it was, it's a very artsy town. And I know you interviewed the family or the people uh, about Mr. Ben Stevens, who was our mayor for years and years and how he commissioned Mildred Wolf yeah. to paint for freedoms that are now in the Mississippi Museum of Art. I just think that is so spectacular. And they hung in his store for years and years. So. Um, Which if, if, if you haven't seen them, go to the art museum and see them because they're huge. <laughs> they're absolutely they're huge. huge. You, you cannot miss them. That's no, right. They, no, they're, they're beautiful too. And I, I think number one, I'm still trying to work past the whole idea of baton throwing school. Um, <laughs> Did they like have the flaming ones and everything they teach? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. that is so cool. I had a friend, we, we would do, uh, I'll say, a, a duet oh, with our batons, and we would pass those, you know, the, the flaming batons back and forth, which weren't as hot or as dangerous as they look. But uh, <laughs> oh, don't ruin it for me. I was totally. <laughs> uh, anyway, that, that was early youth and, and started. You know, I guess my entire life has been a creative journey. Yeah, you, you knew early on, though, that you wanted to study music and voice music. and so forth. And that, that was kind yeah. of your superpower at that point. And you went, to, you went to Southern Miss, right? I did. I got my master's and my bachelor's in music mm -hmm. education with a vocal emphasis. And I always thought I wanted a high school choir. Yeah. And there were none of those. Uh, available when I, Gary and I got married and I wound up at uh, two elementary schools. I went uh, half, you know, two days a week to one and three days a week to another. And I fell in love with L K through six. Yeah. I, I just love working with children. And I, I didn't know that until then. So when we moved to Los Angeles, I didn't teach for a few years. I had our two children Mm -hmm. And then when they got into, uh, I believe Logan was in fourth and Molly was in sixth, I had the opportunity to, to teach again with the stipulation that I would be off in time to go pick up my children. <laughs> <laughs> and they worked it out where I could do that. And I loved, uh, again, it was K through six. Well, af after living in San Diego and living in Southern California, that meant you had to get off work at 10 o'clock in the morning so you could get through traffic. To get to your <laughs> That's almost true. <laughs> That's almost true. Well, you, you know, we've mentioned Gary a few times. Um, you, did you meet him in college? I did. Okay. He was from Prentice, yeah. is from Prentice. And um, uh, he, one of his best friends was a Chi Omega with me. And she said, uh, there's a guy that uh, uh, one of my best friends wants to go out with you. And I was dating someone else at the time. And then uh, when we broke up, she said, okay, I think it's about time. Gary says I asked him out, but <laughs> no, I, we know the truth. <laughs> I was about to say, you're not exactly shy. So I, I, mean, I don't think, you know, I can believe that story. <laughs> Can you believe him, huh? <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know who you married, um, they do know who you married because he's been in like over 200 roles. And it's, uh, and I, I mean, it was, for instance, my, my mother-in-law came to visit and she was like, yeah, I was, uh, I, I just watched this movie JFK that was on. And I said, oh yeah, I, I, 
I, I've interviewed a guy named Gary Grubbs who's in it. She said, oh, who's that? And I showed the picture and she said, oh, I've seen him in everything. And I said, yeah, pretty <laughs> yeah. much, pretty much. Yeah. And I love the line when I met him, I guess in Vicksburg, I said, you know, something stupid like, oh, you look familiar, you know, like that. And he said, yeah, I think we met in prison. <laughs> Yes, that's one of his lines. I like that. That was very good. Just for the ladies, he says, yeah, we dated in high school. You know? Oh, that's funny. That, he that's has funny. a lot of those lines, yeah. That is funny. But, but he, you know, had a long, great career. When y'all met, and were you already doing pageants at that point? I mean, because you were Miss Mississippi in 72, and y'all got married in 73. Right. Uh, yes, I, um, I did the Junior Miss pageant when I was a junior in high school. Okay. And was first alternate uh, to Jane Carol Foshi, who was Mississippi's junior miss. And then later she was Miss Mississippi. Oh, wow. And um, then when I was a freshman at USM, you know, sororities and fraternities asked people to, you know, let, let it, you know, let us sponsor you go, go be in the pageant. And, and um, I, I was in the Miss USM pageant and, then a couple of years later, I, I went off one summer to do uh, uh, music at Six Flags Over Georgia when they had a live orchestra yeah. and a live show, and it was a vaudeville show. I was in heaven. That was so much fun. And then when I came back, they said, okay, it's time now to, to do the Miss Mississippi, you know. So Richton uh, sponsored me. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that, that was a lot of fun. And it was a great year because I graduated just as I became Miss Mississippi. So many girls get it while they're still in college and it's hard that yeah. many drop out of college for a year. Um, but I was able to, to do that. Gary worked for a year and we knew we were going to get married, but we, you know, we weren't even engaged yet, but we got engaged that year. And I always tease him because uh, he majored in insurance business and I always said I married a businessman. <laughs> He's a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Hollywood after three years. We lived in Hattiesburg for three years. And yeah. then we told everybody, you know, we can always come back and do what we're doing, but we really want to go out there. And most everybody thought that Gary was going for me to act. And, and he had always was telling me he wanted to write. He wanted to write. Yeah. He still is writing uh, and has never quit writing and has sold several projects, uh, none of which unfortunately were made. Uh, we didn't realize they buy scripts knowing they're not going to make them because it's like another one that they have in the yeah. waiting. To, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of Hollywood works. I mean, you learn it after you've been there for a long time, but uh, he immediately started acting. We were there maybe four or five months and he had his SAC card. He ran into a guy uh, from Mississippi who helped him get his SAC card, which people are out there for years sometimes and don't have a Screen Actors Guild card. And then Miss Mississippi did uh, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi were given Fords, uh, Ford Mustang, I mean, uh, not Mustang, uh, Thunderbirds for our reign. And with the stipulation, we would come to New Orleans and do a commercial, a regional commercial for them. And we did. And uh, after we were in LA, I thought, you know what? That man came from a big ad agency in New York. I wonder if this was SAG eligible. I found out the name. My mother looked, found my diary, looked up the man's name, and and I called, got his secretary. She said, "Well, he's out of out of uh, town, um, but I'll have him call you back." I said, "Well, let me tell you what I need." And I told her, "I said I need a letter saying that I had been in a SAG commercial." Within a week, she sent me the letter, and I ran to SAG <laughs> and and got my card because you can't do auditions yeah. without without the card. And then I wound up doing several commercials, uh, but I knew that it really wasn't for me. That the the business was not something I was going to want to do. 
what it, what gave that away to you? I mean, what what made you feel like that it wasn't for you? Well, first of all, if you think about it, there maybe is one female to five or six or eight males in every project. Uh, I haven't kept with that in the last few years, but I imagine it's still pretty close to that. There's so many more parts available for men. And the audition process is not something I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just knew that that, that just really wasn't for me. And you know, it, it was just looking at Gary's early roles. You know, the thing that I think worked so well for him was that there were a lot of dumb Southerners. Absolutely. But he was never the dumb Southerner. He was always. He, 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 was he always refused smart. to be it. They tried to put him in it time and time again. I'll tell you the weirdest thing that happened. He, uh, he got a commercial agent, a really good commercial agent, right off the bat. And they said, they called him up. One of the agents called him up and said, we have an audition for you. Now you need to wear your overalls. <laughs> My what? <laughs> he said, you think I have overalls? He said, well, well you're going to have to, you need to get some. So we found some and, you know, he, he wore overalls, I think, to that. And then that did it for him. He said, I am not going to play that. I'm going to go for the lawyer. I'm going to go for the smart southern gentleman i am not going to be um that character so for the most part he was able to to do that it, this yeah. i can only imagine you two in, in in southern california coming from mississippi i mean granted i mean we lived in san diego and people was like hey would you speak southern you know they would they <laughs> It was like we were some kind of oddity you know it's like can you say oh what's katsu you know you get those kind of questions but he told a story about, and he, he was on Rockford Files, which I still think is incredibly cool that he got to be on Rockford Files. Uh oh, it was show. his dream, Marshall. He, he loved that show. We watched it every Friday night. So he, he was thrilled that he got to be on that. And it was the last one. Yeah, that's right. It was in the last season. It was the very last one. But apparently, yeah. he said, when I interviewed him, he said that you, you actually brought cookies. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I brought them to the gate. I couldn't yeah. get in, but he called me at home and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just here. And he said, uh, do you think you have time to make some chocolate chip cookies? Because um, it's the last day and no cookies have shown up. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I called, called him back. I said, I'll be at the gate. And he met me at the gate and took them in. And, and of course, you know, it was the hit of the show. So yeah, apparently Jim Garner, uh, James Garner really likes cookies. So he excited. does. And at, somebody had always brought them to him and, and they didn't. And he just couldn't. He was teasing them. You know, it's the last show. What happened? <laughs> that is that is absolutely wonderful. You know, it's thanks to the power of Twitter. I've gotten to tweet back and forth with his daughter a lot and I mean he just oh really he oh. is like the nicest human being on the planet so he must have been really cool to have him as a dad he, you know? he I bet he was so nice yeah. uh Gary has a lot of great stories uh about different things that happened and when he was uh he was in um not Silkwood well, on the border with uh Jack Nicholson yeah I got to go. I rode the train to see him because we had an actor strike in the middle of it. And so he was just stuck out there, uh, a big group of them for, a, you know, a couple of extra weeks. So I rode the train uh, to El Paso. And they, uh, the next day they were shooting a big barbecue scene in the backyard. And uh, I was able to be in that scene with Jack Nicholson. So uh, standing there just you know, talking to him as he flipped burgers. <laughs> so, it had to be incredibly surreal. I mean, just it was, yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to jump back real quick and then I'm going to jump forward again. You talked about your one year reign of being Miss Mississippi. What was your platform? We, we didn't have a platform oh, you for did? okay. during that time. No, that came along later. Okay. Um, uh, mine was basically be nice to everybody and write thank you notes. <laughs> hey, don't <laughs> and, knock them. Yeah. And I did have fun. I love traveling the state. Uh, got a little hectic during Christmas because so many parades, sometimes two a day. That bad. Uh, so we zigzagged uh, my chaperone and I back and forth. 
Uh, I made money for going and cutting ribbons and being nice to people. And uh, it was a dream job for your first year out of college. Yeah. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, sometimes I would sing or entertain and sometimes I, you know, just gave a speech or, or simply cut a ribbon and just signed autographs. That was, you know, that was about it. I guess if you if you go through the pageants and you do a Miss Mississippi and then do Miss America, which I can only imagine that had to be like the bright lights and the pressure of that. That was a lot of pressure. And you only have six weeks if you get Miss Mississippi or at that time, because they had it in July, middle of July. Oh, wow. And you it, it was a whirlwind. That was the hard part. But then after that, it was it was a lot of fun. Was there a lot of coaching and so forth getting ready for Miss America? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And, and endless wardrobe trying on clothes and trying to find the right, you know, that you're always thinking, well, if everybody else wears white, should I wear red? Yeah. You know, you know, all that sort of thing goes on and you just try to make your best guest and, and that's it, you know? Yeah. What did, what you sang, obviously, what song did you sing? I sang a medley of, um, am I blue and I'd rather be blue. And, um, Oh, two old songs and older, getting older. <laughs> well, it was a couple of years ago, but it I mean, was. A, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still intrigued that you were at Six Flags, though. I mean, I grew up near Six Flags, and so I remember back in the 70s, you know, you're right, they did. They had these big, huge productions, and then they had Buford Buzzard, but then they had everything else. But yeah, that's right. It, yeah. It's, it's we much had beautiful different. costumes. We had yeah. costumes that came from the ice capades. I mean, we were, we were just in heaven, all of the actors and singers, you know, it's, it was so much fun. Well, so, I mean, you know, you touched on a little bit before y'all went out to, to LA um, and what did, what, I mean, what did, what did y'all do to make a living in that, in that period of time? Why very self-assurance and uh, you talked about before we went, yeah. very self-assurance yeah. and I taught uh, elementary school music. Okay. So when you so got out, that, yeah. So when you got out to LA, that was the first thing you did was you, you, you were, I mean, you eventually ended up at a school teaching. Um, I did. Yeah, I did. I did not. Uh, we uh, made money on our home and we had a little house in Hattiesburg. We sold our house and we knew that we were going to hit the ground running because that money would only last so long. And we wanted to make use of our time. So we were 24 seven trying to learn the business, trying to get an agent, trying, you know, doing, talking to people, going to acting class, both of us. We didn't go to the same class. We went to different classes. So <laughs> um, that was a more than full-time job. And, you know, this is why Gary was so successful in this business. He never stopped ever. Yeah. He, he was, you know, sending his pictures out. Well, I did too there at the beginning, and uh, but he never stopped. That was the business of acting is what keeps a lot of people from acting. Yeah. But, but Gary, being a salesman and a businessman before he went, he had learned a lot about walking into the room and meeting people and selling himself. Yeah. So. And showing up on time and doing what you say you're going to do and so forth. That's what I always, you know, I, I tell my, my son's wanting to get into the media world. I just said, you know, the main thing is, is that you need to be, you know, show up when you're supposed to show up because there's, if you don't, somebody else is going to show up and fill your, fill your spot. That's exactly right. But that was a heck of, I mean, you got to admit, that was a heck of a leap of faith for a married couple to go out there. And it just showed you, you two seem to work pretty well together to be able to go across the country and I remember the first time we we moved out there in December and I was going to a Christmas party at one of my bosses up in La Jolla and we're on the five which is how they say it out there the five it's not the five, five the five so we're going up the five and there was a wreck and all of a sudden two California Highway Patrol went past and it was like there's Ponch and John you know from chips <laughs> I mean it, it was so it was so surreal, you know, see the sign to Los Angeles and all that. And you look around and everything's brown, you know, it's like, this right. is, it's like you're on another planet. But I mean, y'all seem to fit into it pretty, pretty easily and, and do that. But I mean, it was, it was tough, though, being that far away from home sometimes, wasn't it? 
it was tough. And uh, of course, there were no cell phones. There were no deep, uh, VCRs. Yeah. Um, so um, we would talk to my parents every Saturday morning. They would they yeah. would call. And uh, sometimes a little too early because they would forget. <laughs> my, my mom would always get the time change three. It was three hours for us from Atlanta to, to there. And she was like, oh, I'll yeah. let you sleep till 10 o'clock. I said, no, it's, it's, you know, four in the morning. It's the other, <laughs> right. it's the other way. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's, it's so hard, you know, t trying to explain to the kids, you know, what life was like before we had free long distance and FaceTime, you know, yeah. you had to remember the movie La La Land. Yeah. We, felt like when we saw that we were seeing some of our story. I mean, it was, we saw places and, and uh, I don't know, it just felt like back in our time. I don't know. That is wonderful. Yeah. I love that movie. That, he's really a great director too. He's done a lot of really great, great movies on that. Um, so you talk about, let's go back to, to, let's go to you just Gary saying you ought to become an artist. When did this happen? I mean, was this when y'all were out there and you're just like one day going, I well, it was at the very end, very okay. end of us being out there. And um, then when we moved back, uh, he said, you know, I think you ought to, yeah, I think you ought to try it. Because I'd heard about um, a place that was going to offer uh, art, art classes. Yeah. And uh, so I just, just decided to jump into one. And, you know, it was really scary for me. <laughs> it is scary. I mean, it is scary to learn something new, especially when you're good at something like singing and teaching, which you were good at both things. But here you're suddenly, it's like suddenly, I remember one time I, I broke my shoulder and I had to write with my left hand. It was like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, it was like, this is really hard. And then I found out I could actually draw as well with both hands, which is really weird. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh. So that's good in case I ever, you yeah. know, get a hook yeah. or something I can draw. Yeah, you got an extra, got a spare. Okay. We're so good. Who did, who did you? Um, did you take lessons out there in California? No. Okay. No. Why did you Why did you move back to Mississippi? I mean, I can I can understand why. I know there's a lot of good reasons to, but why did y'all do it? Well, because we we really came a little before we uh, had thought we would. Um, but basically, reality televisions was taking over. Yeah. And there was uh, people. And then also we didn't have three networks anymore. We had, you know, all these networks and Gary uh, saw that that was going to mean less money for parts Yeah. because they, they salaries are based on viewers. Yeah. And when you divide all the viewers up, the, you know, he had, he had series canceled that are on the air today, but, he had series canceled who had, oh, you know, three times the viewers that they're letting people continue series now, you know? So if that makes sense, but, no, but they, they, the, the, the sponsors pay according to how many viewers. Yeah. So then he also said, well, they're going to show a lot of reruns and a lot of different things over and over. And sure enough, it started happening. You know, we just lost shows and, uh, he, and shows he didn't really, you know, care to, I, I don't know. There, was, there were a lot of reasons. Another reason, we had a California granny, uh, no relation, but we had adopted each other. Yeah. And she was our California granny for my children. And I, uh, Gary and I took care of her. Yeah. Um, she had no family, uh, had some, a few, uh, old, much older in Missouri and she couldn't go back there, no one to take care of her. And we could not find a nursing home that we felt comfortable with. Also, our daughter was gonna be a freshman in college. And she said, well, I would love to go to USM if, if, um, if y'all were there. Uh -huh. <laughs> we went, well, she, she had decided to go to UC Santa Barbara, but she really, really, felt uh, that she would love USM. So all of those together, Gary said, you know what, this is a little early, but I can still commute back here. And there's stuff in New Orleans, some things in Atlanta. Let, let's go back to Mississippi. And I know it, it is so funny you're talking about that because there was, there was that time when every show, there was, everything was unscripted television, which reality television is not reality, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, but that said, 
now with all the streaming services now throwing a bunch of money around, it's almost like there's a renaissance for parts and he's still staying fairly busy popping up in roles. He, he's, he, he seems to be a judge a lot lately. So I, you know, <laughs> if I ever get in trouble with the law, I know who to okay. <laughs> he has an official sheriff badge too <laughs> he's a sheriff a lot too that's definitely oh, yeah, yeah. A very good sheriff also on that but I, I can see why you would move here and like I said now that there's actually more movies starting to be made back in Mississippi now that the tax credit thing but once again the, just understanding the business of art because I think a lot of actors wouldn't have seen that coming yeah that they, they don't they get caught off guard yeah and 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 it's really hard for them. And I'll tell you what Gary also is really good at is when he's in the room, he can read the room. And I'll tell you this one story. This is one of my favorite stories. Uh, he doesn't tell this one much, but uh, he was going in early on to read for um, a, a Western. And he got his hat and he decided he this part sounded older. So he got a fake mustache and put it on and he had read for this casting director a couple of times and uh we had been out there about a year I guess at this point and he went in and there's the director and the producer and the money man and the you know all the five or six really top people for this tv movie and he um reads and he just he can tell when people are with him or when they're feeling it and they get it. And he just didn't feel it. He said, I don't think these, they just didn't like me for some reason. So he gets up to walk out and the cast director's thanking him for coming in. And she says, as he gets to the door, she says, by the way, Gary, it's, something's different. And he said, oh, it's the mustache, but this thing, and he ripped it off, is reversible and walked out the door. That is great. Let them laughing so hard. <laughs> Before he got home, wardrobe was calling and I get the call. Well, we need Gary sizes. <laughs> oh, that said, well, that's first. <laughs> that did it. Yeah. You know, that's that did it. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> I will say this, that um, there are two people in the world that have made me feel short. One of them is Gary and the other is Peyton Manning. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will make you feel short. <laughs> yeah, I'm just six feet, you know, and he's like, hey, okay, nice to meet you, you know, <laughs> so up there. You, you talk about the business of art, and I, I can tell you just from, you know, what I've done over the years, that that first time you put your artwork out there, and let people see it and get feedback on it or actually put something up for sale. A lot of artists don't ever do even do that. I mean, that takes a lot of courage. Did you find, I mean, cause like I said, you stood on a stage in front of television cameras broadcast all across the world. And yet you have this moment where you're putting your soul on a canvas. It's a whole different thing. You know it. It's, a, it's completely different. And I never expected that when I started painting. It was just this tremendous desire to put paint down, to yeah. paint something that I love. Um, and a lady asked me uh, uh, where I was taking art classes. She had a, a, a little a gallery. It was yeah. called West High Studio. And it was also a gift shop. And she asked me, would I like to put some paintings up? And I was like, oh, well, maybe, and let me think about it. So at some point, you know, she said, well, I'd love to put that one up and I'd like to put that, you know. So that was a blessing, but it was also scary. And then she asked me, would I paint something? Uh, every Christmas she would have her open house and she would give away G clay prints to people who came through the open house. And would I paint something that she could give away? And I said, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> she said, I don't know, but just think about it. And um, I had started painting figures. In fact, I brought that painting over here uh, to show you because it's still one of my favorites. Oh, I, I didn't cool. sell it. I sold so many that I wish I'd kept. And then I probably yeah. kept some I should have let go. But this is one I kept. I'm going to get this. Okay. Gary, yeah. are you here? Okay, I'm gonna hold this up. Gary's Gary's coming. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. It's Hattiesburg. Yeah. 
let's see. It's at yeah. the same theater, two people going in, and I just yeah. called it opening night. <laughs> That's oh, beautiful. Man. Thank you. So um, my son actually, uh, and a girl he was dating, went downtown on a Sunday after church and snapped photos for, for, for this. Um, so anyway, that, that's one of my favorites. Let's show him some more. Yeah. Um, two years ago, I um, had, they had a contest in Hattiesburg. They, uh, Tubby Barker, our mayor, decided to have a uh, Midnight on Front Street, um, a, a New Year's Eve celebration. And of course, this was the first one. And then last year, of course, we couldn't have it because of COVID. So, I, but anyway, this was my art for that. Have you ever heard about our hub sign that used to be on the building downtown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1912, I believe it was. Uh, and then I think during the story is during the wars, it was dismantled. I mean, it was huge, Marshall. It was just maybe two stories high or something. It was huge. Uh, and it was to promote Hattiesburg way back in those early, early days. So that's what, that's what. It shows what why we're is. called the hub city. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I'll show this you. is another favorite of mine. When the Harvey Weinstein story broke and it was all on the news. And I, I know I have had friends who have had terrible experiences in Hollywood, trying to get parts, trying to make it. And it just weighed so heavily on my heart that I woke up about the third day of hearing all this on the news. And I just said, I'm going upstairs. And, and it was one of those paintings that just kind of painted itself. Uh, I, it's not the best painting in the world, but it represented what I was feeling of women coming together and standing up for each other um, and, you know, supporting each other and trying to get through those awful times where you feel like you're on an island sometime, you know? Yeah, Glenda, I saw you had tweeted that out and I'm so glad to actually see the original on that. Cause I mean, like I said, when I saw it on Twitter, I was like, that is incredibly powerful. Um, well, it was powerful to me, and I know yeah. you've probably experienced this when you paint something and the time is gone. You yeah. don't know how you yeah. even got the colors on your palette that's on your palette, and and all of a sudden you're finished. And I think I painted it in three and a, three three and a half hours. It was done. That's incredible. Is that acrylic or is that oil? That's oil. It's oil. So you work in both acrylic and oil. Which anybody who works in oil in the South with the humidity is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love oil. Uh, right. Oil's my favorite, but I do love acrylic for certain things. I'll show you some of my beach ladies. Okay. Tell, tell I, Gary that I, he would be, he's, he would be a very good cameraman if he ever wants to get into that. <laughs> so th those are in acrylic. And oh, that's I, beautiful. I can get the shading in with the skirts, and you can see through the skirts, you know, when okay. with, with acrylic, much easier than with the oil. So your technique, of course, you're impressionistic in your style, but you you vary your style around. Like for instance, right here, and is that the is that the Monet one that you? No. Okay. No, here, here's the Monet. Um, yeah. Well, I'm the reason I was going to say it is that your handling of the of the crystal is is just off the charts, and that's so oh. incredibly hard to do glass like that. Well, I'll tell you, um, this is the Monet that I they loved. Yeah. And, a masterpiece show. Um, I figured out with the with the glass work uh, because I use a palette knife a lot. I love yeah. a palette knife, but I don't use it too much in the glass because it needs to be sheer and almost see through, yeah. like in these areas. But I found out if you just do an abstract, just do a pretty abstract inside the water and then the water around it. And then you can come back and touch up with the palette knife, but that makes it look a little more real. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I know don't, exactly. Don't yeah. count the stems. Don't count the stems that go with the flowers. Just make a pretty abstract. Well, that's the thing. I mean, and, it, it's like, and, and I paint also, nobody ever sees my, I've had 7,200 cartoons published, but I've met, you know, nobody's ever seen my paintings, but I've, I've always learned that you put more information in the area where you want to lead the eye. You know, you make it a little bit sharper, a little less fuzzy. 
And yeah, exactly, exactly on that. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, how long do you feel like that you, it took you from the second you started doing lessons to where you felt like somebody could see your work? Uh-oh. Lost you for a second. You still there? Up, oh, your sound is out. Hi, let me go back over. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lost your sound for a second. You're back. All right, am I back? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Came back. Um, well, it it was uh, it was a. Uh, I turned it off. Oh. Gary, I go bragging on your camera work. Wait a minute. His his fingers just touched it. Let's see, Marshall. I'm gonna find you again. Hang on. Hit video. We're we're doing fine. All right. Let's see where. All right. Yeah. Is this it now? Is that it? No. It should say video down in the lower left corner. All right. Let me turn it this way and get. Um. All right. I can't even find the page. Um. Oh, I'm so sorry, Marshall. That's okay. We got a second. No pressure. All right. Let's see. <laughs> is this it? Let's see if this is it. There we go. Here you are again. So if all you right. Want to, yeah, if you want to flip it back horizontal, you can. There you okay. go. There you go. All right, perfect. All right. I watch my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> under the bottom, Gary. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, the uh, gives see. us the finger. So it was a while before I felt comfortable. And, yeah. and as I said, there are still times um, where, you know, you just, it just doesn't work out what, yeah. what, you, what you're trying to show. That's beautiful. I, I, I love just, your figures. I mean, you know, I mean, I, this, I guess I fell in love with your animals first, but I really love your figures. Well, this one is for, I'm saving this one for uh, the Heart Association. We were supposed to have a you know, COVID canceled the, the, the gala. So um, that's, I'm saving that for, for hopefully they're going to have it this fall. I don't yeah. know. That's an auction piece. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else was I going to, I'll show you a couple other things. I This one's got some color. <laughs> and that's mostly palette knife. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Um, like a, this is our favorite family. Christmas one. Um, let's see. Can you see the deer? Yeah. Uh, that's my son's favorite one. <laughs> um, I've, I've done a lot of Cafe Du Monde's. Um, so I kept this one because it has the musicians in it. And at the time I painted it, it uh, it's all about the bass was the song of the day. So this one's, it's all about the beignets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and I, then I, I just dabble in watercolor just for fun. Yeah. And I've just have some of these ladies, music ladies where I play with that. But There's a little um, cotton over here. You know, got some cotton. Yeah, I think the um, Mississippi cotton was one that I saw early on. You really do handle cotton balls. Well, <laughs> not easy to do. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, uh, there's, a, there's a brush for that. It's called a mop. Really? Okay. Yes. That's kind okay. of Okay. So you look for, the yeah. <laughs> so. Good to see you, Marshall. Here, Good to Gary. see you, Gary. <laughs> Take care. Y'all figure it out. <laughs> we got it down. We got it we'll down. Try. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your, your great camera work. We appreciate it. All right. We'll talk again later and uh, I'll tell you some more Hollywood stories. <laughs> that sounds good. Always good to visit with you. Okay. Talk to you later. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, he did a great job on the headshot, too. So I was going to say, you know, if the whole acting thing doesn't work out, he can always, you know. Become he can be a, yeah, he has a good eye. And, you know, I love to show him my paintings because he, he always has great comments and suggestions when I get stuck or if I'm not sure if I'm finished. One of the things I do, uh, I try to name the painting before I paint it. Yeah. So that when I get 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 to where the painting matches the name then you know it's hard for artists to stop sometimes you touched on something i think that you know and i get it when i paint and sometimes when i write but i don't get it when i draw cartoons it's that flow 
is when you literally lose track of time. Yes. You know, and it, it's because it's sometimes I think, you know, just drawing the cartoon sometimes is work, you know, because like, oh, I got a deadline, I got to get this done or everything else. When you're painting, you're getting lost in it and everything. And it, when you see, <clears throat> you know, you mentioned you work from pictures sometimes and, and, and I do too. I, I just interviewed Wyatt Waters who goes live everywhere and I've got everywhere. Blessed. He does it with watercolors too, which it's like, oh, it makes sense. I know. I know. He's got watercolors out in the rain. I don't know. I don't know how he does it, but you know, that's what makes Wyatt Wyatt. But on that, but but when you're when you're doing a painting, do you kind of see it in your head first and then just start getting it down on, you know, and try to chase what you're seeing up here and get it out of your hand and onto the canvas? Yes. I I I um I usually have a feeling or I, I see parts of it, maybe not the whole, yeah. but I have the idea that I, that I want to express. And I decided a long time ago, you know, when you first start, and I, this is something you, you can't tell people this, that they'll say, oh, well, I have no talent. I, I would love to paint, but I, have no, I just have no talent. And I go, well, you may have talent, yeah. but you first have to learn the skills. You've got to learn about the brushes and about mixing the paint and about uh, uh, holding the brushes and you know how to get on the there's all those little this, there's a lot of skill involved in any of the arts yeah. you know very few people are born that they can sit down and play the piano there are some but not many right. <laughs> and so uh, most people I find just aren't willing to spend the time to to get the skill set down. They just, you know, want it to happen and it's not going to just happen most of the time. I think Stephen Pressfield's book, The The War of Art, is one of the best <laughs> books on that. Uh, you know, literally because it, there is that tension between starting, you know, looking at that blank piece of paper, that fear that you have to learn to overcome. And you're right, you have to do the work to be able to get as good. I mean, and you've, you know, your work, it's like I said, it came on my radar in 2017 and it's been fun. I love following you on Facebook because it's fun to watch the progression and, the, and when you experiment and try new things. And that's, you know. I love to do that. Yeah. I, I don't want to be pigeonholed and just do one thing because right. that's not why I got into art. I just, I love all of the different, you know, different mediums and di different things. I just love learning. So and I learn something all the time when I paint. Um, so it is a journey. Art is a journey. It's, and I don't ever want it to be stagnant. I've talked with artists who say, well, everybody loves my trees and they won't let me paint figures that they yeah. will not buy all they want are trees. So I just have to keep painting trees. And I thought, I don't ever want to feel that way. Yeah. I want to be excited to paint something. And I don't want to paint objects. Like when you first start, you paint a rooster or you paint a boat. And I learned that that's not fun, just getting it on down. Okay, so what? But when I can get it, when I can show that I love this boat or that this boat is ready to go or that this boat uh, is in a beautiful spot uh, or whatever, then, then it's fun for me to try to paint it and to try to get, capture that. I try not to think about that. I just try to do it and become mindless and just let let it happen. You can't always do that though. You know, you have to. Literally, you are doing the artistic version of what Gary did when he refused to wear overalls for every audition. There you go. That's what I, Bowie Bowden. Uh, I have several pieces of her art. The, the first art that we ever bought was from Bowie. Uh, and she, she has always been a proponent of that. She said, don't let anybody tell you you can only paint flowers or you can only paint this. Just keep painting what you love. So, um, and I get tired of flowers and I'll get tired of boats and I'll get tired of, you know. So uh, I even have some collage that I've done that, ooh, now you're talking about making a mess. Collage, you better get ready for a mess when you start tearing up paper. Yeah. <laughs> And gluing it down. Oh my goodness. See, I, I don't have, it's, it's kind of like drawing and pointillism. I don't have the patience for that either. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't either. I don't, e I've tried that. I've tried just doing the little tiny, tiny strokes. And, mm. yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know how Van Gogh turned out so many paintings with all those little strokes that he made. And, and you know, you talk about learning and taking classes and so forth. And you, you, I remember going to see Van Gogh's work. And it's the same way with me with editorial cartoons, seeing the actual originals. Yes. You, know, you can see the original of a painting or of a cartoon or any other piece of art. You understand, you make that connection with the artist and you understand how they did it instead of just looking at it in a book. It's just a totally different world. And I don't know about you, but I mean, I, I'm one thing I love about it, and I'm kind of impressionistic when I paint too, because I feel like that my stuff looks better six feet away from it than it does up close, you know, and same with my yep. cartoons too. But, um, it, <laughs> but it, it is fun to see the process. It is. You're right. I love, I love to be able to, in fact, when we were on that trip, I was telling you about in France, we were in Arles and uh, we went to a museum that they can't afford to have a Van Gogh's originals there. So they constantly are borrowing. So we had like nine Van Gogh paintings to look at. And there was one of this beautiful flowering orchard and, and it was a small room and there was a guard right at the door and I think there was one other lady in there with uh, my sister-in-law and I, and I, I couldn't take my eyes off of this. And I kept getting closer and closer and, cl and you can take pictures as long as you don't flash. Most all museums, they will let you take pictures, just no flash. So I'm taking some close-ups and I'm getting closer. And then in a minute, I just started stepping back and my sister-in-law, I looked out of the corner of my eye and she <laughs> She was laughing. The guard had come right up behind me and was ready to grab me if I went into that painting. I guess he thought this woman is going to touch that painting. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, I, I said, I got lost, Linda. I probably would have touched that painting if I, if I had thought about it. I said, I just, you know, was just mesmerized by all of those strokes and seeing what colors were under there that you don't see when you're standing back. Yeah, yeah. It, it's literally almost like learning how a magician does their tricks. That's right. How they create the illusion, you know. That's exactly and right. Very, very strong on that. And it's it's fun because like I said, I, I see that fun in your work and I can tell where you're trying to figure things out. And when you try something new, I can see that. That's, that's one of the reasons I like you as an artist because I, I like to see that. And I mean- Thank you. You know, I could do the same cartoon every day. I understand, you know, and it's, sometimes it's easy, especially when you're in the commercial field and the business side of it, which, you know, like acting, you know, there is a business side to art and you have to know how to work with galleries, how to be able to get things done. And, and, and it's nice to see that your work is starting to spread around in different galleries around the state and so forth. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I would say I'm proud of you. I'm just happy for you. I'm just glad. Thank you. Your work's getting Thank out. you. I appreciate it. It's so nice to have uh, uh, friends who who love to see what you're doing, you know. Yeah. And, and understand what what you're trying to do. Well, so artists are you... very supportive too. Yeah. I found artists are very supportive group. They they are, I mean, they, they just help each other, you know. Well, and that's that's you know, and I'm reading. Uh, Ralph Eubanks has got a book about Mississippi authors and storytellers and so forth, and and I've been listening to that while I do my walking in the morning. And I started thinking about the artist, artist community here in Mississippi. And of course, I think about y'all moving back to Mississippi. Everybody here is very approachable and they're very kind and they're very, I mean, there's several authors that I, that I know that have done things on a national scale or two, you know, book award winners or whatever, but you talk to them and it's like, we're all in this common boat of living in Mississippi and being artists here. And it's just fun to talk shop with them. Yeah, I, I'm sure. Uh, I don't get to as much. Sure. You're part of it. Good grief. Well, I know. I, I, well, I, I guess seeing your side is a whole different thing, but um, yeah. I, uh, uh, I will never make a living doing this, but I surely have been blessed and rewarded um, many times. It's, uh, yeah. it's been wonderful. And it's something, you know, if you think about it, when you're a singer, your voice gets old. Uh, yeah. Your fingers may not can play the piano because of arthritis, but many people can still keep painting. And I think 
it's a way that God gave me something to fill the void of not singing as much. Yeah. I sing in church choir. Well, I haven't gone back since COVID, but I will go back. Um, but uh, not not the solos and all of that. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask if you still did some singing. So, yeah, still church choir. That yeah. That's where I started. And that's where well, I'll look. I sing in church and they turn around and tell me to stop. So I, <laughs> the fact that you can sing, there's not a joyful noise. It's more like gnashing of teeth. So the fact that you still can sing, I'm, you know. <laughs> well, Linda, I mean, I don't want to take too much of your day. Go ahead and throw out there where people can see your work. You know, I mean, your website or whatever, Facebook or social media or whatever, so people can see your well, yes. paintings. Yeah, I'm, I'm have glindagrubs.com. That's easy and enough. And I'm Glenda Grubbs on Instagram and on Facebook. So Very good. All, and, all the same. Yeah, and I'll throw out real quick. You're, you're. I know you're proud of your kids too. Um, they've, they've been, they've done well. Uh, Logan's now the. I guess he's down at the University of South Alabama and uh, so he's director of football development. That sounds pretty cool, too. And Molly's had a really great career, you know, in she advertising. Has. She's very talented too. So I mean, I know y'all are proud. Yes, she's she uh, she has, and uh, blessed that she can work from home now. Yeah. And yeah, because you have a grandchild now, so that's right. That's yeah. right. 20, 21 months old, so so you're spending uh, a little bit of time heading over that way, some too. We are, we are, we love it, and uh, I'm always trying to think of another song to teach her. So uh, <laughs> I, Gary's Big G, and I'm Gigi, and oh, excellent. Lately, though, they say, "What does uh, Gigi say?" La la. I, I have a feeling I may become Lala. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> First grandchild has naming rights. So, you know what I do want to say? I, I do want to say that I have art at Jackson Street Gallery in Ridgeland, a yeah. beautiful gallery, Odd Fellows Gallery, downtown Hattiesburg, uh, Gulfport Gallery of Arts in Gulfport. And then tomorrow, all of these flower paintings are going to Jay Parker Reclaimed in Laurel. Nice. So, that's why I happen to have all of these. Yeah, Laurel's got it going on right now. There's a lot of good things. They happening. do. They, yeah, they do. really do. Well, yes. Glenda, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you, Marshall. Good to see you. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.